أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الوالي الكريم وصلى الله على أنبياء أجمعين والمسيح والمحتي والمجدد لمن مرسلين Are we not the bearers of witness that nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it? And that he is alone and has no partners. And that all gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sustainer of all the boundless universes. All gratitude is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the generous eternal friend. And send salutations of Allah on all of his prophets and his apostles. And on the Messiah, the anointed one. And on the Mahdi, the guide. And on the Mujadda, the reformer which was all sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send greetings and we send peace throughout the boundless universe to all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. You are now listening to The True Light with the Sayyid al-Imam Isa al-Hadi al-Mahdi in a live question and answer session. Excuse me. Last week I was here and um, we were talking about uh, the Canaanite woman and how she was asking uh, Jesus to heal her daughter because she was taken with devils. But the thing I wanted to ask after he called her a dog yeah. <laughs> and she admitted that she was a dog. Yes. He said that her faith was so great, but then doesn't it say that at that very hour her daughter was made whole? That's right. I was wondering if white people humble themselves onto the Creator like that, will He make them whole? No. Here's what happened. Her daughter was possessed of a raving demon, right? And that demon was cast out of the daughter by the mother. Look at the overall story. This is what the Christians miss. That Jesus, who they say was sent into the world, to fight against evil and wickedness, correct? Yeah. He would not touch this woman. That's the part they just don't want to see. Okay. He wouldn't touch her. He wouldn't, he, in fact, when she first spoke to him, he pretended she wasn't even there. Okay. And then Jesus went thence and departed from the coast of Thai and Sidon, which is one of the sons of, I told you before, from the sea where Canaan came from. Right? Mm -hmm. And behold, and look, a woman now look why they put her and behold. Why behold? Why not? And a woman came to him. It was like, it's an astonishing thing for a Canaanite to approach him. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast, that's of Sidon, where the Amorites come from, and cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me. Why would she have to say have mercy on him if he was there to heal people? Because she knew that Jesus was not sent to her. Do mm -hmm. you understand that? Now here's the point. Christians pretended Jesus was sent to everybody in the world. And right here, this woman who approached him said, Have mercy on me, O Lord. The trick is, O Lord is not Lord like Rabba in the scripture. It's Sayyid here. See, the thing is, when they translate, they use different words for Lord. Whenever the word Rabb, Lord, it's used for Rabb al-Alameen, the sustainer of the heavens, as you would have it in your language. But then they use Sayyid for Abraham, where his wife called him Lord, which means Mr. or Lord or Master. And the word is a Sayyid, okay? Mm -hmm. In the original scripture in the language, at this point, she says, Ya Sayyid, O Mr. So while they're pretending she's respecting him, she's suddenly disrespecting him. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Son of David, my daughter is grievous, vexed with a devil. The woman is a devil. I mean, there's a chin torment in the house. Because some white people get so possessed until they go off and start shooting people like they did at McDonald's, just walking with a gun and start shooting up people. Those type of devils, they even worry the more sophisticated devil. Now that devil gets mad at the clan who goes out and just starts hanging black people. Those devils are possessed with legions of demons that Jesus said. They have legions of They have spiritual demons who come into them as opposed to just being the incarnation of the seed of Satan, which we can find in Genesis if we want to. All right? 
Okay. So now, this woman is, first of all, disrespecting Jesus by calling him a son of David as opposed to the son of God or the Messiah, which you're supposed to be recognized as, right? Now, who says, my daughter's acting crazy like a demon? What did he say Jesus did right in 23? But he answered her, not a word. All right, now, because this woman was not addressing Jesus by who he saw himself as and who the world was supposed to see him as, what did he do? He didn't answer. He ignored her. Uh, Mr. Uh, you, son of David, <laughs> when he was supposed to be Rabboni, that Mr., that master, son of God to them, or the Messiah to them. And Jesus didn't even pay no attention. So the disciples looked at this woman because they're watching to see who's coming against Jesus, to see who might be deplementary or dangerous to him. And he says, and the disciples came and besought him, went to get him, because they was obviously not standing next to him. Right? Right. And what did they say to him? And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth crieth after us. Um, But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's right. He told the woman, I can't help you because I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You know another good point? How could they be lost if he was standing there with his disciples who people keep saying were of the house of Israel? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So he was not talking about his disciples either. (laughs) He was with them and knew that they wasn't the ones he was there for. And said, I am not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel only, which is symbolic of the tribe of Judah. Then came she and worshipped him. Now she refers to him as Rabboni. She went and found out something somewhere and came back and fell at his feet. They call it the hem of his garment. Fell at his feet and said, Lord, help me. Now he'll talk to her because she addressed him properly. And he answered and said, it is not me, it's not right to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. He wanted to know if she understood what he meant. And she said, True, Lord. That's right. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Now, the Canaanites are therefore the servants of the children of Israel, right? Mm-hmm. Well, back in Genesis, when Canaan first got the curse on him, he said, Curse be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Here this Canaanite confirms that statement that many people ask why and how. She says, you're right, but as a servant, I, I'm entitled to the crumbs from my master's table. And what did Jesus say in 28? Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. Now, whose will is it? Thou. You Not his will. Pardon me. Not Jesus' will, though, right? Right. Be it unto thee as thou wilt. And go ahead, and what happened? And her daughter, her daughter was made whole from that very hour. When talking to that woman, he said, O oh, woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, even as your will, not thy heavenly Father's will, but your will be done. That we tell you over and over again that Jesus said that the devil is so powerful. In Matthew 24, he said he is so powerful that he's going to be doing all types of signs and wonders that if it was possible, he would do what? He would fool even the very elite. Yes, there are preachers in the street that have the power to heal, to win people over, to perform all types of abstract feats. The devil himself has the power to do things. He can cure his own. He has the spirit of Satan in him the same way you have the spirit of the Father in you. And that's right back in Genesis, in the beginning. Let's go back to Genesis and find out if the devil is inside people. The first verse in Genesis chapter 3 is speaking about who? The serpent. That's right. Read, read it for me, please. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Correct. Now, if we went to Revelations chapter 12, 
and wanted to get an understanding of the serpent, we would. Number 12 of Revelations, verse 7, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. Correct? And prevail not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, called the devil, and Satan was deceived the whole world. And his angels were cast out with him. You understand that? Now here we speak about a devil called a serpent or a dragon who was cast out of heaven because he burst the angels and he has deceived the whole world. Well, let's see where he first deceived man and woman in Genesis, okay? Now, this serpent is the devil, correct? Yes. <laughs> According to the Bible. Okay, so let's see what it says about this devil. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord, the Creator, had made. And he said unto the woman, speaking to Hawa, Eve, yea, has the Creator, which they use the word God, said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now here's this serpent, the dragon, the devil, coming to this woman and saying, Did the Creator of heaven and earth tell you that you should not eat of the tree of the garden? And Hawa, Eve, the mother of all living, said unto the devil, or the serpent, We, including Adam now, <laughs> we may eat of the fruit of the trees, plural, of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, the Creator has said, ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye shall die. That means that prior to this, this woman and her husband, Adam and Hawa, Eve, were not destined to die, right? Mm -hmm. Eve said, we were told by the almighty creator of heaven and earth that we can eat of every tree in the garden, but the one that's in the midst of the garden, we shouldn't touch it, otherwise we'll die. And what did the deceiver, the deceiver who deceived the whole world, what did he do? The serpent said unto the woman, you shall, shall, not, you, you shall not surely die. You're not going to die. <laughs> For what? For God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now this is an interesting point that people keep popping over. Now, obviously, Eve's eyes was literally open because she was looking at the serpent and talking to him. So we're not talking about her physical eyes, right? Right. We're talking about her spiritual eye that opens up which lets you know good from evil called willpower. When you can make decisions on what's right and what's wrong. And you can make decisions over life and death, like the Almighty. He knows that that day that you eat it that fruit, you're going to be like him, having the power to take life and give life, to lie and to steal, to do all the things that are entitled within the gift of will. And what happened? And when the one and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. First thing she did is saw that it was good for food. It was healthy looking, looked like something delicious to eat. <laughs> Go ahead. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. It had a beautiful appearance. And a tree to be desired to, to make, make one wise. These are the three most important promises of the devil. Um, I was told um, that um, the apple was like symbolic. It wasn't really an apple that they ate. It, was it really an apple? Was it really fruit off of a tree? The thing is, pertaining to the apple in the garden, is it refers to it as fruit. It doesn't use the word to fry, apple. Uh -huh. Now, we're looking at what they call a pomegranate apple. You know what a pomegranate apple is? Mm -hmm. Or what you refer to as a Chinese apple? When you split it down the middle, you see that it has little pods in it. The poppy seed is also referred to as a fruit. A poppy seed plant looks just like the pomegranate apple. It has the same shape 
and when it's open, the seeds come out. The poppy seed has a flower, a beautiful white, white and pink and yellow plant that grows on it. You follow that? Yes. Plus, the poppy seed is used for food, for spices. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Does this sound kind of familiar? Yes. It sounds more like Genesis chapter 3. And the woman saw that the fruit was, the tree was good for fruit. poppy seed. Mm -hmm. And it was pleasant to the eye, had a beautiful plant. And a desire to make one wise. When people take these drugs, this crack, this heroin, they start thinking they're supernatural. The temptation was drugs. That's the poppy seed, which is called the apple in the Middle East, that has a beautiful flower, which is used for food, and when intake makes people think that they're supernatural. The devil consumes more of us in drugs than he does in any other type of warfare or genocide that he has. And every time he gets with a one, he brings forth another one. You understand? Yes, I do. And I go look up a poppy seed and study it and then look up a pomegranate apple and study its appearance and everything you see it's a duplicate of one another okay he says go ahead she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and also gave unto her husband with her what did she just do she ate the fruit and what else did she do she gave it to her husband that's another big problem we have we do wrong and we get weak and we make our mate or our friends do wrong and weak like us. But you people got control of your own soul because you got that will. So you let them do it to you if you want. Go ahead. And he did eat. What did man do? He, he ate. ate. Let's go on. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked. Now, did the devil lie? And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. Did they die right after they eaten it? No, they didn't. Okay. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as what? Uh, as yes. gods. Right. When I say, you people are gods, everybody say, that's blasphemy. This is what the Bible says. And if you are gods, all right, and the Bible calls you the son of God also, what makes you any different than Jesus? according to the Bible. Because you did eat the fruit, and now you know good from evil, and you didn't die, so you must be what? Gods. Mm -hmm. And you know good from evil now, don't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those attributes that the devil said would happen if you partake of the fruit did happen. You know good from evil. Your eyes are now open. Now what else happens? Then the woman gave it to the man, and he ate it. All right? What happens? Now they're going to dress themselves. Right. And the eyes of the were okay. And they sewed. This is number seven. Uh huh. And, and the eyes of were, them both were, were open. open. Right? Uh huh. And they and knew that they were naked. They knew a new attribute. What is this attribute? Shame. Mm -hmm. So what they do when it became shameful? They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And many people ask me, uh, what do they mean by aprons? They mean an incomplete garb. An apron only covers a certain part of the body. You understand? Uh -huh. It doesn't cover the whole body. If you just run over to 21 for a minute of the same chapter, you will see where the Almighty is going to take and dress them fully. You see it? Unto Adam, also, and his wife, did the Lord, the Creator, make coats of skin and clothe them. You see it? Chapter 3, verse 21. Mm -hmm. The Almighty made them clothe their bodies properly. So a short dress is not appropriate in the eyes of the Most High. He made them put on a cloak which is in that day meant a full robe, the way we dress today, the way you see the brothers and the sisters dressing. He made us cover ourselves. And anybody who's still walking around in an apron or half-dressed is walking around dressed the way they chose, not the way the Father or what they call the Lord, the God, made us. Now let's go back to where we are at eight. 
And they heard the voice of the Lord, the Creator, walking in the garden, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid. What's the next attribute from shame? What's the next? Uh, Deceit. They tried to deceive the Most High. They heard him coming and they hid. Now we got shame and deceit. They hid themselves from the presence of the, Lord. of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. The very thing that they took of, they hid themselves in. Not only is he showing deceit, he's also showing the more widely attribute of man, stupidity. To try to hide from the creator of the garden, in the garden, is really stupid. Right? right. <laughs> See, we're, we're getting all these new attributes as human beings here. Now we go on to number nine. And the Lord, the creator, called unto Adam and said unto him. Now why didn't he call unto Eve, Hawa? She's the one that took up the fruit. Because man was responsible for woman, the Quran teaches us. And man was supposed to see that Eve didn't get seduced by the devil. He still to this day lets the woman be seduced by the devil. Where art thou? That's right. He asked, where are you? Why did he ask that? It's in the answer. And he, Adam, said... Heard that voice in the garden. And I was... Afraid. afraid. Now man just told a lie. Did he hide because he was afraid or did he hide because he violated the commandment of not eating the fruit? He lied to the Most High. The Almighty will put forth the form of righteousness and give you the option to work on the Surat al-Mustaqim or Sabil Allah or to work on Sabil al-Shaitan, the path of the devil. He gives you real power and gives you the right to make the decision that is on you because you are like him. You have real power. You have self-determination. This is why he asked him. You Did see? You? Where are we now? Uh, what number? Eleven. An eleven. And he said, this is the creator speaking, who told you that thou was naked? So he knew that Adam hadn't talked to the serpent. You see? Uh -huh. Hast thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Now notice the answer Adam gives. It's called passing the buck. Twelve. And the man, meaning Adam, said, what? The woman whom thou gavest to me. Man not only blamed the woman, but he blamed the heavenly father for giving him the woman. He didn't just blame woman. He said, the woman you gave me, she made me eat of it. See that? Mm -hmm. 13. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, the creator, said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? The woman. And the woman, and the woman said, the serpent, the serpent me. tricked me, beguiled me, and I did eat. Everybody's passing the buck. There'll be no intercession on Yawm al-Akhri, Allah Ta'ala teaches us. You understand? Yes. Let's go on. Okay. And the Lord, the Creator, said unto the serpent, Shaitan or Iblis, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above the cattle and above the beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go. And thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now, first of all, what is this dust that thou shalt eat all the days of thy life? Is it man? Correct. How do you know? Because man was made from dust. That's right. Because the Bible teaches that he created man of the dust of the earth and blew into man of his nostrils and man became a living soul. Now that's interesting. That the dust that the devil was going to eat, and why they say he'd be on his belly, he meant he'd be moving around, he's sliming and sneaking in his deceit, and he'll get men. You see that? Uh -huh. 
Let's go on. And I will put my enmity. Now this is the most important chapter in Genesis and Christians and Muslims and everybody ignores it. You have been listening to The True Light, a question and answer session with a Saeed al Mamisa Al-Hadi Al-Mahdi. Now let us return to The True Light with a Saeed al Mamisa Al-Hadi Al-Mahdi. Remember, you are the light and you have the power over all things. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, you come up with the first signs of racism. Many people have attempted to translate it from the original Sheretic Arabic into Arabic, into Hebrew, into Aramic, into Latin, Greek, and now even down into English. And be they Jehovah Witness, Seven Day Adventist, or whatever, all these scholars of the scriptures never attempt to explain this one spot. What they mean by bruising, what they meant by enmity. Now the enmity in the original scripture is the Arabic word adawa. And it means hostility. Now listen to it when I translate it word for word. This is Genesis of the Torah of Nabi Musa, alayhi salatu wa salam. This is the third chapter and the 15th verse. After the devil had tempted Mother Hawa in to be taken of the forbidden fruit, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to them. Where and adawat, the hostility, I will make bainaka between you, because he's now speaking to the devil. Bainaka, between you, wa and baina between El Imra'at, the woman, meaning Mother Hawa, the wife of Adam, who is called the mother of all living. You see here, the woman, Eve. And then he continues, Wabena, and between Neslika. The word Nesala means seed offspring by way of sexual contact, the generation, the bloodline. This is not some spiritual or allegorical thing. This is in actuality the seed of the devil we're talking about here. And the seed of the woman, implying that they both have genes. Look up the word Nesala. The same word comes out in Hebrew. Don't let them tell you that's because it's an Arabic translation. The original scripture was in Syretic Arabic. This is seed, Nessa. Or in this case, it says, Neslika, your seed. Wabaina, Nesliha, her seed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He has put hostility. This is racism. He's going to make hostility exist between you, Shaitan, the devil, Wabaina al Imra'at, and between the woman, Wabaina, Neslika, and between your offspring, Wabaina, Neslaha, and between her offspring. The Creator is going to put hostility between two seeds of people. One would come out of the seed of Hawa, and the other is going to come out of the seed of the very devil. That's right, the devil has a seed, and the Quran would back me up, and I'll get to that later. Hua, it or he, Hashimu, it will break, shatter, or crack up a hollow thing, destroy, smash, or crush. 
See, they use rules and say they use the Hebrew word shoe. For hostility, they use eba. Shoe for bruise. It means to crack or break, to bust asunder, to shatter. Now watch what it said. You, Hashimu, he will break the Asaka, your head, or it will break your head. Whose head? The devil's head. The head of the devil will be shattered. This sounds like a prophecy of the coming down of the beast, where they speak of the head of the beast having to come down. Or in Deen al-Islam, throughout the traditions of al-Islam, how must be taken in the last day. This is what it sounds like. Somebody knows what they're talking about. Well, Anta tells the word is, and you shall fight. Tell Sa'a, and they got who on the end. You shall bite him like when a snake, who we're talking about, the serpent, bites someone with their venom and poisons them with it. And it says that you're going to be bitten, or he, whoever this is of the seed of the woman, he will be bitten, fill in urdab, in his heel, or the lower part of his foot. Make note that the woman's seed will despite the devil and destroy the head. The word here is Ra'is, meaning leader, I'm talking about the leader of the beast called Abaddon and Apollyon in the book of Revelation. Because if you read the book of Revelation, you see that this beast has to come down. And this beast will rule an army. When John looked into the sky and saw a great star fall and hit the earth, he's talking about a third world war. And he saw a head over this army which he called Apollyon and Abaddon, the beast, the dragon, the old serpent, called the devil. Now, what does this mean? The meaning of this quote, when we translate it and get its true meaning, let's listen to it. Also, I, Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will make you the devil have hostility. This hostility will be between you, the devil, and between the woman, Eve or Hawa, alayhi salam. And also between your children, your devil children, and her, Adam and Eve's children. It, the hostility, because that's why it's who are there, it, the hostility, or it, he, the sons of Canaan, who have the hostility, and you know it's amazing, it manifests itself every day. Because sometimes a black man will walk into the store, or a black woman will walk into a major store, and because they're not dressed the way the white society predicts, you walked up and asked, can I help you? And you have to say, well, my money's as good as anybody else's. You become all paranoid, because they walk up and they assume that you're a thief they have this hostility against you because they're so small-minded out of their hostility and hate for you they insult you when you walk out of their store or their establishment so this hostility is between the devil's seed first and of course the woman Eve's seed but this hostility will break the devil's rule and you will be bit by his hostility. And the poison of this hostility will also bring you down. Now this is the key to real racism. Assalamu alaikum, brother. 
I'm a Sunni Muslim, and I think you teach racism. Now, I'm always asked, am I a racist? I can't be a racist. I belong to the race that is segregated against. How can I be the racist? I belong to the people that's been abused. I belong to the people that's being misinformed, uneducated. Of course, there's a lot of so-called Sunni Muslim brothers of mine who are ignorant to the truth. Now, that's racism when Jesus says, I know the blasphemy of those who call themselves Judah and are not. Because he claimed to be of Judah. So like me today, I say, I know the blasphemy of you people who say you're descendants of Abraham, you're not. In El-Islam, in El-Islam, in Al-Quran, قال Allah Ta'ala, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He says in the Holy Quran, the third chapter, the 33rd verse, it reads, Surely Allah did choose Adam and Noah and the family, and the word is Ali, Ah, the family, Ali, Lamb, Ali. Which now because we know that Noah came from Adam and that Abraham came from Noah and that Aaron came from Abraham, then this Al, this Alif Lamb used here, Al, means a blood relative like Nesala. In the Quran 333 says, Surely Allah chose Adam. In the Allah, Astafa, a Adam, wa Nuh, wa Ahl Ibrahim, wa Ahl Imran, and over Alameen. He chose these people above all the other people in the earth, all the other tribes in the earth. Allah chose them, he says. Now, what makes this such an interesting quote? is that Muslims, be they Sunni, Shiite, Ahmadi, or whatever they call themselves today, in their salah, which is another word for worship, prayer, we all say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, wa ala al Sayyidina Muhammad, kama salaita ala Sayyidina Ibrahim, wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim. This translates, and I'll get to that word Allah because it comes from the Quran 3 33. O oh Allah, Allah, send Allah on Sayyidina Muhammad, our noble Muhammad. See that word again? Ali, the same thing from 3 33. And on the Ali, the family of Sayyidina Muhammad. Kama as salata, you already have past tense salate to send salutations ala on Sayyidina, our noble. Notice the two words are the exact same Sayyidina Muhammad, Sayyidina Ibrahim. Sayyidina Ibrahim, on a noble, our noble Abraham, wa ala, and upon Ahl, Sayyidina Ibrahim, and on a noble family of Ibrahim, in Nekka. Hamadu Majid, surely you are the most magnificent. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has linked these two words for family. Many so-called Sunni Muslims approach me about a section in the Quran. They love to throw this section, don't know what it means. Holy Quran 4913. And this is meant Allah. Min Allah Ta'ala, ila Rasuluhu Muhammad, to Muhammad, by way of Jibrail, salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. To all human beings, Allah makes a statement in 49.13, O oh, you people, ya ayyuhan nas, O oh, you people, surely we, inna khalaknakum, Surely we 
created us, you all, Allah and his angels, because we know that the angel is the we. Allah and his heavenly host helped to shape the body of Adam. We created you all, men from the Karin Won, from a male, which is Adam, where a female, which is Hawa or Eve. We created you from this. Two pairs, a male and a female. And we made you. Who? Who do we make? We made you. Who? The male and female of Adam. We made you. Shu'uben. We made you into Shu'uben. What does it mean? It means tribes. Don't tell me the Quran doesn't recognize tribes because the Quran says, La fi Quraysh, for the protection of the Quraysh. Ayak, Tamud, Bena Israel, Midian, Sabians, the tribes throughout the Quran. Don't tell me you don't know what you're talking about. But Allah Ta'ala says right here, He has made from Adam and Eve tribes. And Kabaila. And he made from those tribes Kabaila. Families. This is a different family than Ah or Usra or Aila or Ahlel. This means tribes like from the Prophet Ibrahim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we got from his wife Sarah Isaac Ishaq and Ishaq and Ribka or Rebecca gave birth to twins Jacob and Esau Yaqub and Isaac and out of this Jacob we get twelve Sons. And those twelve sons were called the children of Israel, Benai Israel. And these are tribes. You want to get into detail, we'll get into detail. We get first from Jacob and his wife, Rebecca, as you know, which you can find right in Genesis chapter 35. Verse 10, if you dare to look. The first son was Reuben. The second son was Simon. The third son was Levi. The fourth son was Judah. The fifth, Dan. The sixth, Naphtali. The seventh, Gad. The eighth, Asher. The ninth, Ishahar. The tenth, Zebulun. The eleventh, Joseph or Yusuf. The twelfth, Benjamin. And had one daughter named Dina. Abraham had another wife named Hagar. And you can find this in Genesis 16:3. And she was the daughter of Abdul Hamid or Amhoptek, who was of Egypt's third dynasty under Zauzer. Now, Ishmael was born, which you'll find in Genesis 16, 15. From Ishmael, we get the Ishmaelites from the family of Abraham, a tribe, the Ishmaelites. Three different sets of tribes came out of the one family, Abraham. And his son started off, Nebajot. This is Genesis 25, 16. Now, Ishmael's wife was Saida, Fatima, and... She is the one who bore him the twelve sons. Saida Fatim, Nebajot, Hidar, Abiel, Mibsan, Mishma, Dumma, Messa, Hadar, Tima, Jator, Nefesh, Kedima, and the daughter, one daughter, just like Israel, Besima, who married. Esau, Jacob's twin brother. And that's found in Genesis 28, 9. 
So now I came back into the family through Esau, who became known as the father of the Edomites, which is the red race. Don't listen to these so-called Americans calling themselves Israelites who don't know who Edom is. Edom, Edom means red or blood. And Esau, the brother of Jacob, became the father of the Edomite race by mixing with Hittites and other cursed people. From Abraham, he had Ishak, he had Ismail or Ishmael, and he had his sons Midian, Zimran, Jokshan, Maidan, Ishbak, and Shua. And they came from Keturah, his third wife, who you'll find mentioned in Genesis 25.1, the daughter of Nimrod, the mighty hunter of Cush. Polygamy did not originate with the prophet Muhammad and did not originate in Arabia. It originated back in the Torah way before Jesus. So he had three wives, which made him a family man of the family of Noah, which I showed you a lot of the Islas says he chose above everybody else. And out of that family from Noah, who came from Adam and Eve, that is the single male and female from which the family came. This is not racism. This is history. This is facts. And all of these people thus far was black. Original people. There was no Amorites until, or pale people, cave dwellers, until after Noah and the flood. Now I just showed you what the Holy Quran is talking about when it says, I made you into Sha'ub and tribes. Those tribes were the Midianites and the Israelites and the Ishmaelites who came from the Qabila family of Nabi Ibrahim, the prophet Abraham. And what did it say? So that you would know about each other. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that? Why did he say, Li ta'arafwa? Because he knew that the root word here was arafa. Arafa. To know about. Not alam. To learn from. To learn. But to know about arafa. Not adri. To perceive. To perceive. But arafa. To know about. So, he wants us to know about each other. What is it that we know? When I look at other tribes, I see other customs and other traditions, and that the Quran says that if we all worship Allah Ta'ala in Tawheed, we shall return to him. Let me tell you a very important point. If you so-called Sunni Muslims want this to appear as a contradiction in the future, you continue to integrate. The Holy Quran, chapter 49, 13, is going to become the only verse in the Holy Quran that will be a contradiction by you integrating. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala broke us up into tribes and families that we know about each other. If everybody on the earth intermingles and becomes one tribe and one family, then the Quran will have a contradiction in future generations. Allah ta'ala does not make mistakes. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim I seek protection of Allah from Satan the curse. I warn you people to stop playing with my father's words. That verse goes on, you read it. But we're constantly being warned, and who are we being warned against? We're being warned against what's found in Genesis 9, 25. Turn to it, and let's see what Allah Ta'ala tells us. And he said, Curse be canon, a servant of servants shall he be, unto his brother, because the white race came out of the cursed seed of Canaan through the house of Noah, because in 24, the prophet Noah, wasalam, it said, and Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his youngest son, meaning Ham, had done unto him. And what did he say to Ham? He said, curse be Canaan. He didn't say curse be Ham. He cursed Ham's fourth son, Canaan because the genetics and the genes changed in the fall. He was albino, albino, and out of his genes came Ham's son's disease. Ham's son, Ham's son's disease, leprosy. Remember the name, cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brother. And he said, blessed be the Lord, the creator of Shem. 
This is who the so-called Germans would say in their part of. They're not Semitics at all. Anti-Semitism is taking place every day in America. You are the true Semitics because the Semitic tribes are blacks. And if you want to follow me up, you move on to Leviticus, chapter 14. Now, what is this disease or curse that was put on, remember the name, Canaan by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who commanded Noah, alayhi salatu wasalam, to put a curse not on Ham like the so-called pale Mormons in the South pretend. We don't have it. Hamon means black. We don't have it. <laughs> you have it. And what is it? And the Lord spat unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, what did he tell them? When ye come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for possession. And then he said, and I, the heavenly father, I put the plague of leprosy in a house, the land. Why in our house and not in the whole land? Because these Canaanites have taken over the land the same way they're doing today. They took the land and was living up in there with their wretched selves. And Allah tells us right there that he put a plague of leprosy there. If they doubt what they look like, all they got to turn back to is Leviticus chapter 13, verse 30. And you'll see, then the priest shall see the plague. What plague? The plague of leprosy. Or new canon. Then the priest shall see the plague. And behold, if it be in the sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it yellow, thin hair. Yellow thin, not yellow nappy hair. So don't ask me about brothers and sisters who got the mixed genes in their albinos and ask me, is this pertaining to them? No, it's pertaining to people with yellow straight hair, blonde hair. The Bible says it, not me. The Bible is what you're calling racism, not me. And Leviticus 13, 36 repeats it. And if you want to find out if there's the same plague, Leviticus chapter 13, verse 10. And the priest shall see him, and behold, if the raisins be white in his skin. We covered two major points here. One is the color of his skin being white, and the other is the color of his hair being yellow and thin. And the Holy Quran, the 20th chapter, the 102nd verse, will back up the rest with their blue eyes, it tells you about them and their blue eyes in the Holy Quran, and it used the word Zurukan. And many, I mean many so-called American Muslims, would love to try to hide this fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pointed out their blue eyes. They cannot hide the truth. So the Quran is speaking about blue eyes. Don't let them tell you that it means Blair, or Claire, or Romans, or wicked people. The word zurqa from the word azraq means blue. Ask them what's the word for blue? Azraq. Don't and say what's the word for blair? <laughs> yeah, Allah Rabbi. Allah, you know all of our mistakes. And people on earth, I warn you, stop playing with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're too clear. I warn the teachers and the ministers and the preachers and the aima. And the shayukh, the imams and the chefs, stop playing with what you don't know. This is way above your head. This truth is far beyond any of you men can imagine. So here, it tells you that the curse was on the seed of Canaan. And the curse was what? Listen to 11, chapter 13 of Leviticus, verse 11. It is an old leprosy. <laughs> 12. And if a leprosy breaks out abroad in the skin. Read chapter 13 and you'll see where the white man comes from. Does it make me racist? Because when I read the Holy Quran in the 20th chapter, the 102nd verse, Yauma, Yunfahu, Besori, the day when the trumpet, Nafaha, is blown. That's when the angel Raphael will sound the trumpet for judgment, the last day when he shall blow this sword, this trumpet, he will blow through the trumpet, what? Where and 
Nah shuru. And we shall assemble or we shall ha shuru. We shall ha shara. We shall gather. Who are we going to gather? Al mujrimina. Mujrimi. What does that mean? Jarama. Guilty. Accused. Liar. Already committed a crime. We shall gather these guilty. And it says, Yama'idhin. On that day, who are they? They are Zurkan. They are blue eyed. Now, we didn't cover it. Blonde, straight hair, white skin, and blue eyes. And that seemed to be describing what they're calling the devil in the scriptures. Or the one that received the curse of Canaan. And or the one that is of the seed that has the curse. The Jehovah Witness ain't having no problem with it. If you read in the Jehovah Witnesses books, they have one called The Awake. I think it was released in November 8, 1981. And they make mention of who it is. They say, black race from Cush, not due to curse on Canaan, whose descendants was white. Now go ask them. Well, if Canaan's descendants was white and Canaan has the curse, what are you saying? Then when you draw Jesus in your books as white and Moses is white, are you trying to tell me that these people are cursed? Or are you a liar? So ask me again, am I a racist? And I'll tell you over and over again that this section in the back in Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15, is the father and mother of racism. When the Almighty said he's going to put hostility between the devil's seed, and I, mind, I want to remind you again, the devil's seed. I have a book out called Racism in Islam, Part 1 and 2. And in these books, I give an in-depth translation, word for word, on racism in Islam. And does it exist? I am not a racist. I know what race we're in. I was told a story about racism, and I'm going to pass it on. It was like this. There was a man named Hitler who got this idea of choice breeding the best blonde hair, blue-eyed, pale-skinned people who he would call a super race. He got it from watching people pick the choice fruits. <laughs> so what he did is for 47 years in Germany, he bred what he called a perfect race, a blonde hair, blue eyed, pale skin. If you ask the average white person, what is a beautiful woman, they'll say a blonde, blue eyes. You follow? So he bred what he called perfect for 40 something years. I'm telling you this, my brother and sister, this is very important. And then he brought it to the Olympics and he sat back with pride because he knew he had bred a super blonde hair, blue eyed race that would win. And then they put him in the race, and along came a black man. And he outran Hitler's perfect blonde hair, blue eyed, pink skinned race. Hitler, need I say, had a fit. What Hitler didn't know is that the Anglo Saxon slave master had also bred a perfect man. <laughs> but this perfect man had nappy, kinky hair and black skin and black eyes. He was of the sons of Ham through the seed of Shem out of the family of Abraham, Noah, back to that male and female, Adam and Eve, who the Almighty said he has chosen above everybody else. And this brother outran him because the slave master had bred his special being after bringing him from Nubia in Africa of Sudan over here for 400 years. And that's you, my brothers and sisters.
علم الانسان ما لم يعلم صدق الله العظيم ربنا اكمل لنا نورنا واكفر لنا انك على كل شيء قدير This is from the 66th surah of the Holy Quran, the 8th verse, and reads, O oh, sustain and complete for us our light, and forgive us, for surely you have the power over all things.